Hi everybody. Welcome back to my educational channel Edis English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today we are going to discuss how to read and understand different aspects of American dramatist Eugene O'Neill's one act play Thrust. Eugene O'Neill is a writer who greatly values brevity in art. In his writings, he focuses on a small group of characters who have some common interests. Though this tendency limits the plot as well as the activities of characters, it is ideal for bringing out some kind of hidden truth uh, that O'Neill believes must emerge out of drama. In his present play, Trust, which one act play of course, this kind of short design perfectly suits here. So brevity and its concise format of the drama is at once helping O'Neill to better exhibit the ideologies through his drama. Now first coming to the central topic or the theme. Trust centers on the struggle of three civic victims survived on a small white raft adrift on a glassy sea. They cannot remember how many days they are floating in such a condition, descending into madness as a result of their thrust as there is not a drop of water to drink. They prey on each other until they sacrifice their humanity to this kind of uncaring black stained sea. So the entire scene is the traumatized aspects of the three characters who are a battling death in front of them in extreme situation. That is how in extreme situation man reacts. That is the very theme of this play. In his thrust, the three major characters, the dancer, the gentleman and the West Indian mulatto are involved with a different kind of strategies. The strategies are meant for survival. There is abject misery, the vast ocean, after the sea break, there is nothing life, but they are struggling to remain alive. They do at this critical situation, how they respond to this situation, how they finally choose their route to rescue themselves. These are the kind of psychological journey this interests us as reader as well as critics. In a kind of wave of imagery, the text of the thrust becomes more meaningful and each and every word, each and every uh, forms, colors, shows, tell something meaningful in this drama. O'Neill thinks that the theme of the drama should be presentational. His choices of colors, design, sonic settings, uh, that's in modern cinema we can call it choreographic acting is all possibly exhibited in his drama. This kind of tendency is expressionistic view uh, in order to penetrate the psychological and spiritual reality. So the surface reality is there, but O'Neill's purpose is to dive deep into the expressionistic reality. Extends of his play uh, where we can find out a kind of amalgamation of symbolic and sluggishness inside the surface reality of what is told. For example, Beyond the Horizon uh, in his another drama, symbolic conflict between captivity and freedom is there. In Anna Christie, there is symbolic fog. Thrust, however, you cannot find that sort of symbolic meaning, but it is being replaced by another sort of another beautiful exhibition of photographic details, you know photographic details of naturalism, the vast expanse of the sea, the scorching tropical sun, 
the circulation of the shards and their fins, the colors of red, blood, and above all, the characters. All are a kind of a meaningful display of their psychological aspects. And play has to be read on that parameters, on that understanding that each and everything possibly exhibited some meaning. We must run after the meaning. That there is deeper psychological meaning in each and every words uttered, each and every action performed by these protagonists. Eugene's ability to reorganize the external landscape in the light of reality or psychoscape, you know, shows itself more clearly here in uh, this play. The symbolic treatment is uh, somewhere missing here, but we can have the natural landscape. That natural landscape itself meaningfully stating something. Glassy, tropical sea, its vast stillness, its hollowness, its horrorsome silence. You can well remember the ancient mariner that this kind of sea is a kind of a a kind of a terror. The fins of sharks is seen at the sea surface and this adds the gravity of the situation. The forces of nature, the sun, sea, shark, they are equally open to all characters on the life raft. Regardless of their identity, they are now ghost figure, owing to hunger and thrust. God knows how many days they are floating in such a condition. The symbolic significance of the sea and shark is related to death. So it, it states death in a roundabout way, but through naturalistic view, through nature. While the sea is for the vast loneliness, the shark is for the death and destination. Uh, the ultimately, uh, only but the shark satisfy their thrust at the end of the play when they are being devoured by the uh, shark. So, the sea, the shark, these natural settings, the sunlight, everything is stating directly or indirectly the psychological state of these characters, their minds, their turmoil, their tug of war. Another aspect while you are reading this drama, I say you must prefer the very colors that are being displayed in this entire drama. The visual treats or visual images of the colors uh, that make a total constitutions of terror and horror in this play. You know, the red crimson color, the bloods that are horror imagery in this play, the frantic sun has become ball of fire. The sunlight with its scorching rays make sore in the eyes and the eyes turning bloody. The sky it seems is dropping of blood which metaphorically haunts the murder or that kind of a death that uh, reminds truly in so much of the blood reminds us of the Macbeth. It is engulfing situation when the cruel and carnivorous shark engulfs them. The sea becomes red and bloody. So the blood image time and again pops up in this entire drama and the terror in, inside of the heart and the feet of madness is added to it. So in, in, in a nutshell all these images, all these short pictures of nature brings out a horror, a psychic horror of all these characters. Another uh, notable figure, the glittering neglects on the raft that was ultimately signing, uh, it ironically hints the insignificance of material object and how in extreme situation this kind of materialistic association do not bring any meaningful rendering for us. The dancer body, sell her body, wishes to make the neglects uh, delivered to uh, others for a drop of water. But neither the physical chart nor the necklace has any appeal to anybody. Oh, 
all the characters in that play are also guided by some personal obsessions uh, that turn their lives into channels of self righteous imagination or bring about their destruction in fact all of the characters are not under the control of their self uh, in extreme situation they are haunted by some uh, infinite goal they cannot satiate their trust notably one thing all of the characters have no name they are symbolic abstractions look at them they are in bitter psychological trauma they have become physically crippled uh, psychologically crunched imaginatively invaded by haunted dreams and all these things in the broad perspective they represent the modern man floating in the nothingness of the society i am not dragging too much the meaning but it can be meant like way uh, the modern man is willing purposelessly for nothing we we can have that waiting for god or references when they are waiting for some rescue team the characters in unison uh, have different sets of our own personality suppose we are the dancers in our love of finery and beauty the gentleman in our sober attitude to society and obviously the west indian mulattoes under our obsession in our animal instincts as after the pomp and finery gone every human being turns savage the social gentleness cannot win against black forces the play can be read as a symbolic journey of ours particularly of modern man i think um, you can drag that sort of meaning if possible uh, but always support your arguments in that way in fact thrust by onil is a open ended drama like that of every one act play it has a meaningful statement that it has not ended uh, rather the imagination of us can drag on the other sections or the forward journey of this drama or the accents of the drama so you can read this drama in that wide perspective now another notable thing that i like to mention when you are taking this drama as for your reading purposes language is uh, not the only thing one will realize on for effective theater you know the words are always meaningful when you are reading but guests are dances songs along with waiting and silence these are the important elements that he incorporates in this play these elements for an important meeting you know uh, it it arouses a kind of certain emotions Uh, that are very proper to tragedy uh, the pity and fear uh, the grave thrust you know pregnant in itself uh, thrusty the very feeling of ours for a drop of water is enhanced by different kind of motif of watching and waiting when when you are waiting and watching for water and you don't have it has a deeper different characters and variety of feelings uh, make this unil's drama heavier as i have told you that waiting is like that of estragon and vladimir for godo uh, waiting for that island uh, we can uh, always have the result in beckets waiting for godo nothing happens nobody comes Estragon and Vladimir vainly waits for God, who never comes. Here the dancer, the West Indian mulatto and the gentleman are waiting for something to arrive that never comes. And the play is one of that monotonous sameness of the, or the perpetual reoccurrence of the waiting and silence. is like that of an unbroken circle until the end of their life so they waited 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 until they are finished as if waiting is their punishment 
as like that of every human being a modern entity have to wait for their godo here we can quote a few of the lines oh this silence i can't bear this silence again my god this is horrible to wait wait for something that never comes so in this kind of drama when you are reading the words the gestures the characters even slightest movement are meaningful i think a drama should be heightening the life the spirit of life it's a kind of illuminating experience it should not be that that you should already know but rather beyond that so patrick quite's remark is quite uh, appreciating that when we, you are watching onil's drama uh, you are watching that cannot be watched in our naked eyes onil's trust Mm, if you have that drama in your hand and start reading you can have the full experience of life in extreme situation and you can have the meaning uh, that are deep rooted in our psychological realism so with that hope that you should take this drama and start reading and if you find any sort of difficulty in understanding you just pop up and ask me question I have given a preamble ideas, a preliminary ideas how to read and how to understand this particular drama. So, if you like this post, like, share, comment, and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.